Welcome to the $5 Yo! channel and our video on the eight key elements of a successful crafts rule. In this video, we will discuss the eight things you should focus on in order to more consistently throw the dice well. If you master these eight things, you should significantly increase your ability to throw the dice well at the crafts table and make yourself and others more money. You can certainly make money by betting on other shooters at the craps table. But as we discuss in our 20 winning rules of craps video, if you can find your role, it can greatly increase your chances of winning. The only shooter you can count on being at the table every time you play is yourself. You can literally put your own fate into your own hands. Once you master the art of throwing the dice well, you should more consistently leave the table a winner. Before we dive into the eight key elements of a successful craps roll, I want to remind you that if you have not yet watched our video on the 20 winning rules of craps, please do so after watching this video. If you enjoy our videos, please like and comment, and don't forget to subscribe to our $5 EO channel as we will be adding more gambling tip videos soon. The first key element to a successful craps roll is picking the best place for you at the table. Many dice control experts prefer the spot closest to the stick. This gives you a shorter distance to the back wall and an ability to toss the dice much softer. But I recommend finding what is most comfortable for you. Because as rule number one of the 20 winning rules of crap states, if you aren't comfortable, you will lose. I actually prefer the end of the table, straight out from the opposite wall. It's a longer toss, but gives me a straight shot to the other end of the table and is near the don't come should I choose to go to the dark side. I can place my bets there easily without drawing negative attention to myself. But I mainly choose that spot because I like to throw from that position. Most dice mechanics will tell you that you should always choose the spot closest to the stick, closest to the back wall. But again, I suggest you pick what's most comfortable for you and what works best for your style. I have a buddy who likes to throw from the inner hook, and he often gets on a hot roll from that position at the table. Experiment with what you are most comfortable with and then work on your craft. The second key element of a successful craft roll is to make sure your fingers are dry and not sticky. This may sound silly, but clammy or sticky fingers stick to the dice and cause them to rotate in an inconsistent manner. I like to rub my shooting fingers on my shirt or pants prior to the dice being pushed to me from the stick. So once the dice are in front of me, I'm good to go. I actually do this before each and every roll. Sticky fingers lead to random rolls. Random rolls lead to seven outs. Leave the sticky fingers to the shoplifters in the casino gift shops. The third key element is setting the dice. There are many videos out there that speak specifically to dice setting and go into much more detail. But setting the dice is an important aspect of becoming a consistently good shooter. When the dice are passed to you, Turn them over to the numbers you want showing. There are many different dice sets. I prefer to go with a hard way set with sixes on top. Many experts will suggest fours on the top in a similar hard way set. But again, do what works best for you. Leave the dice on the table and just turn them over to the numbers you want facing and rotate them. The dice need to stay in view of the dealers. I like to double park the sixes with the fives facing me. Ideally, if the dice make one rotation or turn over together, there is no combination of a 7 on the original dice set. I find that I throw more hard ways from this set and can throw much longer without throwing a 7. A long roll without a 7 is going to help me fill up my tray. The fourth key element to a successful craft roll is the grip. It's important to squeeze the dice together and lock them tightly in place, where they won't be moving around. I like to use four fingers to lock them in place. Again, the goal here is to get the dice to travel together and not moving around. The fifth key element to a successful craft roll is your toss. Again, you want the dice to travel together and not turn over too much. Practice on what works best for you. I like to float the dice down the table. Since I'm playing from the head of the table, I have a straight shot down the table. I focus on releasing the dice up and not forcing them out. How you toss them will depend somewhat on where you are at the table, and again, what's most comfortable for you. The sixth key element of a successful craps roll is your landing zone. You want to find a place on the table where you can land the dice and roll them to the wall. 
The key here is you don't want to slam the wall with the dice. Let me say that again. You don't want to slam the wall with the dice. This is probably the most important part of the fourth row. The wall is covered with spikes, and hitting the wall ensures a random roll. Random rolls lead to sevens. Technically, both dice are required to hit the back wall. If you can land them softly and make contact with the lower part of the wall where there are no spikes, it's best. Each table has a little bit different bounce to it, so you may need to adjust your landing zone slightly depending upon the table. Also be sure to pick a spot at the table that isn't loaded with chips in your landing zone. Chips are like landmines and can blow up a good roll. As your roll heats up, you will see more potential landmines as more money is being bet on the table. Take a good look at your landing zone before you even pick the dice up. And if the dealer passes you the dice before people are done betting, don't pick them up until people's arms are out of the way. A hand or an arm in the way can mess up your toss big time. The eighth key element to a successful craps roll is consistency. I can't stress enough how important it is to be consistent in each of the elements of the roll. If you can learn to be consistent in which spots you roll from, consistently keep your fingers dry and not sticky, be consistent in the way that you set the dice each time, have a consistent grip every time before you throw, be consistent in the way you toss the dice, consistently hit your landing zone, and consistently not drill the wall and the spikes on the wall, then you should find yourself a much more consistent, reliable shooter and can make yourself and everyone at the table more money. Thank you for watching $5 Yo's video on the eight key elements of a successful craps roll. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video and subscribe to the $5 Yo channel. We'll be posting more gambling tips videos soon.